so this is just a prime example of the fact you don't have to grow your own hogs. We're going to, we're just not there yet, but you don't have to go all that way. You can find yourself a good deal on pork or beef or whatever it is and actually process it yourself. And it's maybe not as intimidating because you're doing it in little phases and little steps. So, I mean, if I just give you a piglet and say, here, make me sausage, you're, you could be overwhelmed. But if you start doing stuff, stuff like this, you're padding your coffers and you're learning at the same time. Even though I don't have my own hog yet, uh, I was able to find this hunk of pork for a dollar a pound. So I am going to be making up all of my sausage for a dollar a pound and a little bit of elbow grease. And uh, so I'm going to go through the process and just kind of show you. With the pork, I'm going to want to maintain the fat content of the pork for the sausage and you'll get to see me debone it. And anybody can do this. You find a good deal on pork. Find yourself a little grinder, make your own stuff. You're gonna save a lot of money and money is where it's at. And I'm really excited to show you guys how to do sausage and to share the knowledge with my good friend, Denise. So, all right. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> got my trusty little meat grinder right here. Uh, got it at a thrift shop for a little bit of nothing. Big surprise. So everything that I'm going to be doing is based on weight. And y'all heard me talk about my butcher shop guy, John. Uh, I got a hold of him and he has all of the recipes left over from uh, when we ran the butcher shop so he gave me all those so the first thing I want to do is I want to tear out my bowl because I need an accurate amount here I want to know for sure how much it weighs so it weighs 11 ounces so just in case we lose that tear we know it weighs 11 ounces so and it's not a very big hopper, so I'm gonna have to be cutting it really, really small. And so the first thing we're gonna make is our uh, breakfast sausage. And so prior to this, I'd already mixed up my breakfast sausage recipe. So if you're curious about this, I'll include it in the description. And um, it does not contain any MSG. So you're not gonna have that excitotoxin in your breakfast sausage. So, all right. So there's really no rhyme or reason to this. You don't want to get the connective tissue. I'm going for six pounds because that's how much spices I made up. And some of the connective tissue will bind up inside of your grinder, so try not to have too much connective tissue. Um, Can you explain that to me? What is the connective tissue? Uh, yeah, so this gristle stuff right here. Um, this is going to be really, really hard to put through the grinder. It's just going to gum it up and be yucky. So, so be careful not to put it in? Yep. It's not the end of the world. But and you don't want your grinder yeah. getting all gummed up. Right. But yeah, a dollar a pound, you can't buy sausage. And I cook a lot with sausage because there's nothing there's no meal that I make that I can't substitute with sausage. Uh, pork is cheaper than beef right now, and until we get to the point where we might want to raise our own beef, um, I'll stick to using sausage. Yeah, that'll do the trick. There's a lot you can do with the ham bone, or I guess any pork bone. Um, a lot of people will give them to their pets. Um, I tend to freeze them, but without it being smoked, it's not the best for like pork and beans without having it smoked. But we do have a smoker, so I may go ahead and just bag this up and I'll be able to have Jason run it through the smoker. So I'm gonna leave some of this meat on this bone for flavor for pork and beans. So. This is something you can just throw into the freezer right now and worry about it later. You've got a bone here. Now, if you're um, new to cutting, there's a lot of ways you can go about this because there's also a bone here. So 
basically the best thing I can tell you without going into a whole animal anatomy lesson, see this is more connective tissue here. So you can sometimes just shave it right off, but start somewhere and follow the bone and you'll be able to debone it really nice. And just don't give up. You can also follow the bone and you can kind of make little slits and work your way down, kind of exposing that bone. And your knife will tell you if you've hit another bone. So you can just kind of follow along and get it to a manageable piece. And just like that, you have connective tissue. So there again, you want to keep, if you're going to make like smoke it and make pork and beans, leave as much little meat there as you want. It's completely up to you and your preferences. And then when you have a big chunk of meat like this, that's when it gets really easy because you can just cut it into strips. Right there's a little bit of connective tissue and a little bit of skin. So I'm going to just kind of fillet that right off. I'm cutting them into little cute pieces and if I don't have enough pork to do a Italian sausage I'm okay with that because oh my gosh my salt and pepper patties oh put them on the grill or even do it in a pan and uh, throw a little pepper jack real pepper jack on there toast your bun oh, it's amazing I would love to be able to give you guys the recipe for the salt and pepper patties, but it's a highly guarded secret. And uh, maybe when my old boss John gets his channel going, which he's working on now, he'll be able to share that recipe. That's for him to share. Now the darker meat will have a little bit more connective tissue, but that's fine. You want both the dark and the light meat in with your sausage. Why? Flavor. Flavor, flavor. And you can get really creative with your sausage spices. Uh, we would have customers that we would add back in bacon to their sausage. Uh, some people like their sausages a little bit more sagey, so you can add in extra sage. Uh, it's all to your liking. If you like, I'm not gonna make it because I don't like a sweet breakfast sausage, but if you do and you like that sweeter hint to your sausage, uh, which pairs really well if you're doing like pancakes and sausage or French toast and sausage uh, is to one of two ways add brown sugar to your spices uh, to give it that extra little sweetness or you can add maple syrup directly or you can add regular syrup directly here so because of the weight of the bowl I know I need six pounds 11 ounces I'm at five pounds, 11 ounces. So I need one more pound in here. We're gonna call it. I like it a little spicier. All right, so we have approximately six pounds of pork here that I've cut up. And on the big commercial grinders, we would go through a two grind process. Uh, on the smaller grinds, uh, grinders, they tend to sometimes go, turn to mush when you go through a two grind process. So I've got my seasonings all here and I'll put all of them in down below. So I've got enough seasoning here for six pounds. So you just kind of want to pour it in, turn your meat and get it well seasoned. I'll let you do a little pouring for me. I used to do this in big lugs. It was much easier when I wasn't trying to do it in such a small space. But all I'm doing this, yeah. I'm doing this in a camper, you guys, so no excuses. Ooh. 
And also, I did not have, I mean, I have a pretty large spice collection. I didn't buy any extra spices for this, guys. I had everything I needed. Eventually, I want to grow all mine. But. And also, when I put this recipe down below, uh, one thing to remember, too, is it's a starting point. I put in <clears throat> about half the red pepper flakes that I normally would because Jason doesn't like spicy. <laughs> so, um, but I love a hot breakfast sausage. So feel free to add anything into that that you want and make it your own to your taste. But I don't know anywhere where I can go and buy breakfast sausage for a dollar a roll, dollar a pound. Ooh. No, you're fine. It's the air conditioner. Yeah. I know, it's like right coming out. Mm -hmm. Seems like a lot of spices, but you gotta remember, um, there's more to the pork than the outside. So once this goes through the grinder, uh, you're gonna be able to really diffuse all of those flavors within the sausage. Uh, when I worked at the butcher shop, we did a C-section on a cow for a farmer and he donated the cow to me. So, of course, John made me do all the processing myself. Big surprise. But I actually use our commercial grinder to um, get me wash that. Uh, make meatloaf. So I did all my calculations for however much was in my lug of meat, added the ketchup and the crackers, onions, flavorings, ketchups, the whole shebang. Went to the Dollar Tree and bought all of these take home containers, you know, the little uh, silver foil containers with the little cardboard lids. And I made like almost, I don't know, it was like 13 or 15 three pound meatloafs to put in the freezer. And they were so amazing. Okay, is that all the spices? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we are going to start the grinding process. And I've got it on the larger one. Where did my pusher go? There it is. So if I think the grains are too large, then I will go ahead and run it through a second grind. Thank you. 
So now I have seven pounds, because I had six pounds of meat, so once it gets all ground and aerated and stuff, so I have seven one pound packages of breakfast sausage, dollar a piece. Okay guys, I'm back to finish my uh, sausage and this is going to be the salt and pepper sausage. And I'm gonna be making this into patties. It's a staple back home in Ohio. Secret, secret recipe. So I was fortunate that my boss John still had it and forwarded it to me. I can't show you the ingredients other than salt and pepper, but in the amounts that it is. Uh, maybe if you go to his channel and like subscribe to him and become his friend, maybe just maybe he'll slide the secret recipe over to you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix up the salt and pepper in with the pork and then we'll get to grinding. Okay, so I have all the pork ground. Uh, finding out that that's, it was a thrift shop meat grinder, so there's probably gonna be a meat grinder in our future. A little bit more beefier. This one had a really difficult time dealing with the fibrous tissues, so. But that's okay, we work through it. And so now I want each, pot, or each patty to be a quarter pound. So I got my scales out, I'm gonna go ahead and patty those up and get a package. So I'm gonna show you how I used to do it. Well. I can't say how I used to do it because I used to use a big machine to pump the patties out, but I had to catch the patties and I had to package the patties. So I'm just missing the big machine. So you work with what you got. Like I said, I want a quarter pound patty. I used to be really good at eyeballing this stuff. There we go. Goodness. Get your head in the game, Tara. Okay. So. I'm gonna ball this up. And. I don't know how this is gonna work, so we're just gonna give it a shot. Whoa! <laughs> but yeah, guys, I got it. I got my first patty. Nice. That's gonna be yummy.
And that, folks, is how you have sausage for a dollar a pound.